It's been just over 10 years since Warner Brothers Games Montreal graced us with a game. Their last offering was 2013's Batman Arkham Origins, which had its shortcomings but felt like a solid Batman game. Originally announced in 2020, Gotham Knights is their most recent release and looks to tell a new story surrounding the Bat family. However, it does fall short in quite a few areas. Gotham Knights opens up with a somber intro. The Kid Crusader is injured and ultimately dies fighting a deadly battle. To make matters worse, Police Commissioner James Gordon has also died and this results in Gotham City falling into a decline in the aftermath of their deaths. Crime and police corruption is on the rise and it falls to the remaining members of the Bat family to restore justice to the city while also investigating Batman's death. The latter results in them coming into conflict with a secret society called the Court of Owls and their brainwashed assassins called Talons. Gotham Knights has an excellent premise, but it falls a bit flat, especially with some unnecessary story reveals that can't really be talked about without some spoilers and some twists and turns you can telegraph fairly early on. The Court of Owls especially feel wasted here, as in the comics they push Batman to his absolute breaking point and feel like an unbeatable force. The Court's history and motifs also clash so deeply not only with Batman, but the entire history and legacy of Bruce Wayne and the Wayne family that they feel out of place as a challenge for the Knights without Batman involved. The court challenged the very idea of who Gotham truly belongs to and what the Wayne legacy really stood for, but yeah, it's just a case of needing a large organization to use as the big bad. Shortly after starting the story, you will be able to choose from one of the four available knights to play as, Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl or Robin. A little while after selecting your hero and playing through the first mission, you'll be able to head out on patrol at night to fight crimes while also pursuing any leads for your investigation. If you've played the Batman Arkham games, this might feel somewhat familiar save for a few changes. Your hero is able to traverse the rooftops of Gotham City using your trusty grappling hook and the streets using the Bat Cycle. When it comes to combat, they can attack up close with combos and from a distance using ranged attacks. The latter is helpful when facing criminals armed with a gun or explosives. Build up enough momentum in a fight and your character can perform a technique that helps with taking down enemies faster or giving you a bit of breathing room. You can also charge both your melee and range attacks which even help with exposing the weakness of some enemy types. During the day you will spend time at your base of operation, the Belfry. Here you will be able to interact with other characters, allocate points in the skill tree and do some training. If you want to try hitting patrol with a different character, you are able to switch your current one between patrols which is a nice option to have. Another thing I liked is how the city actually feels alive. While it isn't packed with citizens, you will see some people walking around and they'll even react when seeing you. Initially, they're mostly negative, but as you progress through the story, they'll gradually start reacting positively. There are even normal cars driving around which you'll need to dodge in traffic when riding the bat cycle. As you go around fighting crime and doing missions, you'll earn blueprints and crafting materials. These can be used to craft new weapons and even suits, each with different stats, allowing you to cater to your specific playstyle. The suits are varied and look pretty great too. The gameplay in Gotham Knights feels somewhat clunky. The combat in particular feels a lot less snappy and initially a little simplistic. This does grow on you a little as you upgrade your character via their skill tree which unlocks more moves in their repertoire. What's a little odd is that the character abilities and specialities actually mar the experience. As fun as some of them are, they feel out of place, especially Robin's teleportation. This rings true for the bat cycle as well which allows you to get around the city in a hurry. It just doesn't feel like it's going very fast even though it's suggested by the visual effects surrounding it when riding around. The traversal also doesn't feel fun. The sound of the grapple guns for example devalues zipping around the city and stealth sections feel archaic. Even the investigation minigames feel a bit lackluster, akin to a mobile game that sees you trying to connect two things together to solve the puzzle. The finishing moves performed when taking down the last enemy in a group do look pretty cool, however I wish that there were more on offer. It should be noted that Gotham Knights can be a bit of a grind. The game does feature some RPG elements, but there is a lot of busy work, be it finding stashes or unlocking certain perks. Some minor features are also locked behind unnecessary grinding and it doesn't feel particularly satisfying. While you can play Gotham Knights solo, it also features drop-in, drop-out co-op, which allows another player to join your game without affecting any of your progress. There is some fun to be had with the game and it's definitely best enjoyed with a friend. It's honestly worth playing through Gotham Knights with a friend in co-op because it actually just makes the experience that much more enjoyable as you take on situations together and plan out your attacks. Visually Gotham Knights looks quite great. It does a pretty good job with the lighting and use of contrasting colors to make some fantastic scenery when out of patrol. 
Despite running at only 30 frames per second, I was surprised to find it doesn't feel too jarring. The soundtrack is also really good, ramping into faster paced tracks during combat but also toning it down during the reflective scenes at the Belfry. The voice acting is also decent but only really some of the time. Ultimately Gotham Knights is a bit of a mixed bag, an interesting idea that can be quite enjoyable but the experience is marred by some design choices that simply don't work very well. It features an interesting premise based on a great arc from the comic books and then it fumbles it somewhat. The combat while initially a little simplistic does tend to grow on you after unlocking more moves for your repertoire. However, the other gameplay aspects such as traversal, investigation minigames and stealth sections don't grow on you as much. Additionally, there is a fair amount of busy work around Gotham, sometimes required when it comes to unlocking abilities and it doesn't feel satisfying, more like an arbitrary roadblock forcing you into more playtime. That being said, it looks fantastic, runs fairly well and plays smoothly despite being capped at 30 frames per second. That and if you have a reliable gaming partner, offers a co-op mode that could provide the boost it needs. If you enjoyed this review, please don't forget to hit like and for more gaming news and reviews, check out Gambler.net.